Non-presenters are also encouraged to uh, turn on your video para po magkakitaan tayo. It would be also good to see everyone on the screen. Thank you very much po. That's great. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. I think we are ready to start. Okay, a pleasant morning to everyone. My name is Sheila CR and I am from uh, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS. And welcome to our virtual roundtable discussion this morning on the future science and technology or SNT human resource requirements in the Philippines, which is a joint research project commissioned by the OSTs Science Education Institute to PIDS. This project is uh, very timely because we urgently need a comprehensive picture of the country's human resource requirements in ST to ensure that they are aligned with the demands of the fourth industrial revolution and the new normal. And uh, to formally open this uh, roundtable discussion, may I call on Dr. Renato Suledu Jr., the Undersecretary for ST Services of the of the DOSD, sir. Thank you very much to Dr. Giuseppe Bio, the director of the DOSD Science Education Institute, to Dr. Celia M. Reyes, president of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, to Dr. Jose Ramon T. Albert, senior research fellow and PIDS research project leader, to all our PIDS consultants, to Dr. Danny Lachica, President of the Semiconductor and Electronics Industries in the Philippines Foundation Incorporated, to Dr. Efrem Metilio, Dean at the Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology, to Mr. Herwin Salazar, Executive Director of the Senate Economic Planning Office, the Senate of the Philippines, and to all the participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We thank each and every one of you for making this online roundtable discussion possible. If there is one thing that became all too common during this time of pandemic, aside from wearing masks, wearing face shields, and social distancing, it is us engaging in learning discussions via the online platform. And that is something positive. I can say that this roundtable discussion will be as rewarding an online experience. So I would like to congratulate everyone for this event. There is a lot to look forward to in this roundtable discussion. This collaborative study between DOSD SEI and PIDS took time to really analyze and forecast what our labor landscape might look like and what we can do to make such market favorable for us. Central to this gathering is the presentation of the results of the study, which is not just about current trends in the state of our science and technology human resources, but also valuable recommendations on what we can do to better respond to these trends. We are excited to learn more from the results of this study and from the insights of our experts. The Philippine government has a lot in its hands these days. As issues beyond this pandemic, like extreme disasters, food, water, and power shortages, rising commodity prices, increasing pressures, pressures on our environment, traffic, rural poverty, and the likes, constantly challenge our resolve. The government has been pushing for solutions that will improve resiliency and provide enabling mechanisms for sustainable growth. We count on industry experts in many aspects to help us find the means and provide wisdom in our responses 
and in better understanding complexities that will help us to develop long-term technology solutions. That is why the Science Education Institute of the Department of Science and Technology remains committed in developing human resources in engineering and other fields of sciences. Whatever world we are about to face, producing science and technology workers can never be a bad thing. Through the conduct of this roundtable discussion, we hope to engage our pool of experts in giving us insights as to the outlook of the future, even if this is purely online. Surely, there will be no side talks with colleagues, posters, presentations, and other normal activities in a conference. But if this is the new normal, I'm sure we can adapt and we will find ways to make the same impact, if not more. We hope that our interaction with one another will extend beyond this roundtable discussion. Let us make this session a very fruitful one. And may I remind everyone to listen and ask questions with a bigger picture, our future in mind. Congratulations again to all of us. At maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much, Yusuf Siludin, for your insightful opening remarks. At this point, may I, may I also call on the president of the PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Thank you, Sheila. Good morning, everyone. Um, and um, also good morning to um, Undersecretary Dr. Renato Solidum Jr. Um, let me also acknowledge some of our other officials who are joining us in today's forum. Um, I think from DOST, we also have Undersecretary for Research and Development, Dr. Rowena um, Guevara. Uh, we also have, of course, our partner um, for this study, um, DOST Science Economic Institute Director, Dr. Jacet. Uh, Bio and Deputy Director and Engineer Albert Marino, um, and also from um, the Engineering Research and Development for Technology um, Project Leader at UP, um, Associate Dean Dr. Geraldo Denoga, and from the Accelerated Science and the Technology Human Resource Development Program National Science Consortium. We have um, Department from the Department of Chemistry, Dr. Fabian Dairi. And also from the National Research Council of the Philippines, we have President Dr. Gregorio Del Pilar and um, Executive Director Dr. Marietta Sumagaysay. Um, and we have from the National Academy of Science and Technology, we have Director Luning Ning Samarita Domingo and former NAST President and former PIDS Board of Trustees, Dr. William Padolina. And from the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development, we have Director Dr. Reynaldo Ebora. And from the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chair, Mr. Perry Ferrer. And from the Congressional Policy and um, Budget Research Department, House of Representatives, uh, we have Mr. Romel Asuncion. Um, and let me also welcome our other guests from the private sector, academe, and um, government. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through right now has emphasized the importance of science and technology in addressing risks that threaten our lives and economies. Around the world, we're looking for technology solutions to detecting the virus, treating infected persons, developing vaccines, etc. As we transition to a new normal, we can expect a lot of innovations that will be incorporated in the way we live, work, and communicate. The way we transact our business has been changing significantly and more so during the last few months. Work from home arrangements has become the norm these days for many of us, and I believe will continue for some of us even after the pandemic. Cashless transactions has increased significantly during the pandemic, and as digital infrastructure further improves and trust in the systems increase, cashless transactions would become the norm too. And the OST, uh, not just the OH, has been in the forefront too in the fight against the pandemic. For instance, I often see Yusek Ibarra being very active in the IAT FTWG on data analytics. But there is a bigger trigger that has been causing disruptions in the way we live, work, and communicate even before COVID-19, the fourth industrial revolution. In its 2016 report on the future of jobs, employment, skills, and workforce strategy for the fourth revolution, 
The World Economic Forum has suggested that given the massive disruptions in business models emerging from the increasing use of um, technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, we expect corresponding consequences in the labor market and the nature of work. It is crucial for policymakers, educational institutions, as well as current and future learners to anticipate the nature of future demands of the labor market arising from rapid changes in the world economy. The Philippines in particular faces challenges in advancing science, technology, and innovation, with only two out of five firms being innovation active as of 2015, based on the study conducted by Dr. Albert et al. Part of the reasons for the lack of innovation is the low supply of research scientists and engineers in the country. Furthermore, the country ranks 73rd out of 127 economies in the 2018 Global Innovation Index, an overall measure of the innovation climate. Various studies on innovation point out that countries that are not in the forefront of STI have difficulties in making catch-ups and leapfrogs. Additional financial investments in research and development alone are not enough. Hard and soft infrastructure, as well as capacity development of human resources and institutions, are complementary factors to research and development investments in improving readiness to the fire. That's what we call the fourth industrial revolution. In fact, we had uh, um, our annual, the theme of our annual public policy conference in 2018 was on fire. The government needs to ascertain the actual conditions surrounding the cultivation of science and technology human resources in the country. Local studies conducted on the demands and supply of SNT human resources in the country is limited. Thus, in 2019, the Philippine Institute, PIDS was commissioned by the Department of Science and Technology, Science Education Institute, to develop a comprehensive report on the future SNT job requirements in the Philippines to inform policy related to SNT human resource development. Today's presentation and the results and recommendations of the study titled the Future SNT Human Resource Requirements in the Philippines, a labor market analysis, will provide a holistic picture of the country's emerging SNT HR requirements and will help identify specific policy recommendations relative to the development of SNT human resources in the country. The research team, led by senior research fellow Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, will be joined by his collaborators. Dr. Chris Francisco, Dr. Ana Maria Tabunda, Mr. Charlie Labina, Dr. Carlos Primo David, in presenting the results of the study. Overall, the results show that while the total SNT workforce constitutes only a small portion of the country's workforce, and that the diverse SNT occupations differ in growth potential in terms of employment, government, and the private sector. Uh, government and the private sector need to support most of SNT disciplines, especially in the wake of new tasks from emerging technologies. Despite an increasing demand for SNT resources and indicators and employability prospects, many of the young do not pursue and persevere in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics careers. Government and the private sector should be incentivizing them towards STEM, even as early as junior high school. It may be prudent to substantially invest in SNT human resources and provide supporting me mechanisms to make our SNT human resources agile and our innov innovation ecosystem flourish. Providing financial assistance or scholarships can be helpful, but this alone may not be enough to produce the needed pool of future SNT human resources. Government is advised to also gain insights on various factors that affect the supply of SNT workers to craft necessary policies for incentivizing SNT graduates to persevere in their disciplines and actively participate in the economy. Our study team will elaborate on the findings and recommendations later. We will also be joined today by leaders in the private sector and academe and the objectives as mentioned earlier of this round table in addition to presenting the results of the study are to solicit inputs from selected stakeholders from the private sector, academe, and government on factors affecting SNT labor market and identify strategies for improving current and future SNT human resource pool amid the impact of fire technologies and the new normal. And the discussion will start with some of our key stakeholders sharing their views. Uh, we have Dr. Danilo Lachica, President of Semiconductor and Electronics 
Industries in the Philippines Foundation Incorporated and Dean Dr. F. Uh, Metilio from the Mindanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology and Executive Director Mr. Merwin Salazar from the Senate Economic Planning Office. We hope that the discussion today with the concerned stakeholders of the science and technology sector will help in the formulation of specific policies that will prepare our future workforce with the changing demands of the labor market with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Mamsel. So we will now proceed to the presentation of the research project by the study team. And if you have questions on the uh, presentations, please reserve them uh, for the op open forum. However, you may already type your questions using the chat box while the presentations are in progress. To provide us a background of the project is the study leader, uh, Dr. Jose R Ramon Albert, who is a senior research fellow at NES. He was a former um, Secretary General of the defunct National Statistical Coordination Board, which was consolidated with other statistics offices into the Philippine Statistics Authority. Dr. Albert is also a member of various bodies and expert groups on statistics and related matters, including the United Nations Global Pulse Data Privacy Advisory Group and the Philippine Commission on Higher Education's Technical Committee on Statistics. His main research interests are education, um, ICT, Social protection, poverty, big data, and data mining. Toots? Uh, uh, and, and also, uh, Sheila, uh, good morning uh, to our colleagues from DOST. Uh, last year, PIBS was commissioned, as already mentioned by uh, 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 Sheila earlier, uh, that uh, commissioned by the DOST Science Education Institute to conduct a study aims to develop a uh, comprehensive re report on the future SNT job requirements in the country to inform uh, policy related to SNT human resource development. So today we will be presenting the results and recommendations of our study. Um, now, uh, before the study team, the entire study team, we're gonna uh, let you hear from all of us, uh, proceeds in presenting the main results uh, I will give an introduction and uh, brief background regarding our research, followed by an overview of the SNT workforce to be presented by uh, Dr. Anna Tabunda, a scene from data source from the Labor Force Survey. Following Anna, presentations will be given by Dr. Chris Francisco, Abrigo, uh, Mr. Charlie Labina, uh, and Dr. C.P. David, uh, that give outlooks on the in industry, academe, uh, and government sectors, respectively. And lastly, I will be discussing ways forward to wrap up the presentation before uh, hearing from our discussants and proceeding with the Q&A. Uh, to start with, let, we are all aware that while science and technology is the backbone of the innovation ecosystem and innovation drives new economic activities and growth, the country, ha unfortunately, has invested very little in S&T. Uh, Dr. Ray pointed out earlier that in 2018, our Global Innovation Index uh, uh, standing was uh, around 70 something, 78. Uh, although in recent for this year, I think we've we've jumped up to 50. But still, our pool of human resources uh, in SNT has been fairly limited, uh, especially when compared with developing countries in East Asia, such as China, Singapore, Malaysia, that are at the frontiers of innovation. I've often pointed out that we have twice as many lawyers than scientists and engineers. With emerging technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, which uh, as pointed out by Dr. Reyes earlier, uh, here at PIDS we refer to as fire, and disruptions in production and supply chains resulting from the fire, the increased globalization of labor markets may actually result in new and different set of demands, opportunities, and challenges across science and technology fields, especially in the next five years, which we have to prepare for and anticipate. Furthermore, both the public and private sectors are retrofitting amid the new normal conditions as we continue to face the challenges posed by the ongoing pandemic. Given these possibilities, it's crucial for policymakers, educational institutions, as well as uh, current and future learners to anticipate the nature of future demands of the labor market arising from the rapid changes in the world economy. Reports from several international organizations, such as the World Economic Forum, ADB, World Bank, uh, all suggest that disruptive changes in industry brought about by the use of emerging uh, technologies are reconfiguring business models 
and demanding new skill sets for the workforce, in, especially in the period 2020 to 2025. While forecasts vary by industry and region, momentous change is underway. Governments will have to cope with risks of growing technological unemployment and inequality and businesses with a shrinking consumer base. Our actions today that will determine whether the change mainly results in massive uh, dis displacement of workers or there, there will be an emergence of new opportunities for us. The PIDS, in partnership with the DOST SEI, has undertaken an integrated analysis of specific SNT human re uh, resource requirements um, using various data sources and results in the literature. The study is expected to serve as basis for formulating strategies and providing policy directions regarding the country's SNT human resource development and uh, in cognizance, of course, of the, their implications for economic growth and development. In particular, the study provides a holistic picture of the country's emerging SNT human require, uh, resource requirements and help identify some uh, recommendations and policies and strategies on uh, uh, SNT capacity development, particularly education, especially in the administration of DOST scholarship programs, as well as ensure that we match our capabilities uh, of SNT professionals with the current and future demands of the labor market. Allow me to pass the discussions to Ana Tabunda now to elaborate on some projections of the country's SNT workforce based on a data source from the Labor Force Survey of the Philippine Statistics Authority. Ana? Uh, Toots, before uh, Dr. Tabunda does that, um, may I give uh, a profile of uh, the study team? Um, okay. So. Okay, thank you very much, Tud. So we will hear the presentation of the study findings by the members of the study team. We will hear first from Dr. Ana Maria Tabunda, who is a professor of statistics and former dean of the School of Statistics at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She also currently serves as the research director of Pulse Asia. Um, to be followed by uh, Dr. Chris Francisco, who is now a research fellow at PIDS. Here, areas of specialization are in transportation economics, development economics, and applied econometric analysis. And before joining TIDS, she is an associate professor at the De La Salle University School of Economics, was also a consultant at the, at the DTI, and an associate at the AGB um, Institute in Tokyo, Japan. Then we will also hear from Mr. Charlie Labina, who is an assistant professor at the University of the Philippines School of, of Statistics. He had more than 25 years of experience in teaching statistics at the graduate and undergraduate levels, as well as in coordinating training programs and in training statistical workforce in government. And um, okay, we will also hear from uh, Dr. Uh, Carlos Cuevo C. David, who is a licensed geologist and professor of geology and environmental science in UP de Demand. And from 2015 to 2017, he was seconded by UP to the DOST, where he concurrently served as Executive Director of DOST Pichard Innovation Council and Officer in Charge of the DOS, DOST Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Dr. David is also a member and current chairperson of the National Technical Panel of Experts of the Climate Change Commission. After the presentation of the study findings, will be the discussion of phase forward by Dr. David. I now give the floor to Dr. Tabunda, Tabunda and her colleagues. Um, good morning. Um, this part of the study attempted to uh, project employment of specific op occupations, but the main limitation of the study is the lack of good quality data on many SNT uh, occupations. As SNT professionals and practitioners constitute about 5% of the country's employed population, the usual sample size of the Labor Force Survey or LFS of PSA is not sufficiently large to provide good quality estimates of the number employed in s and occupations. LFS data from 2010 to 2018 were used, um, so that consists of only 36 quarters short of the 50 uh, minimum required to produce accurate and reliable projection estimates. And a uh, structural break occurs in many of the LFS data series due to the shift from the 1992 uh, occupation codes to the 2012 occupation codes in April 2016. And this has implications on the projections based on the series. 
As for the methodology of the study, well, respondents are classified into uh, SNT occupations based on primary occupation, and the uh, SNT occupation groups covered are the ICT occupations, architects, planners, surveyors, and designers, engineering professionals, life scientists, physical scientists, mathematical occupations. In this study following U.S. classifications, medical and health occupations are excluded from SNT uh, occupations. Now, the main method used uh, was uh, exponential smoothing method, specifically single estimation, double estimate single exponential, uh, double exponential, and whole winter's no seasonal exponential um, smoothing methods. These methods are a collection of forecasting uh, methods that use weighted averages of past observations of a series to forecast new values. And um, the methods can be used even if the time series is short. Um, and um, to determine the, uh, bet the best of Forecast available um, the uh, results of the SES, DES, and HFW exponential smoothing methods were compared on the basis of root mean squared error, and the forecast used is that which is that is that which produced the smallest root mean squared error. Now, um, here are some of the findings. Uh, we have actually uh, poor quality of projected employment uh, growth rates um, obtained for the occupations due to the small sample size of SNT uh, professionals in LFS. So to compare with the exponential smoothing uh, forecast, the average annual growth rate of the series for the period, the last three years, 2016 to 2018, is also computed for each occupation or if it, or uh, the last average uh, the, or the last annual growth rate if there is only one year available. Uh, even the average annual growth rates point to the large variability in the data series. And here, for example, for the various occupations under the ICT broad category, we see very large um, absolute magnitudes of the growth rates under the exponential method, also under the average growth rate and the uh, the uh, estimates can even take negative, large negative values, as we can see here. Another example is the uh, uh, occupations under engineering. Um, here we see the same. Uh, we see large growth rate for uh, chemical engineers under the exponential smoothing and negative for uh, most of the... And similarly, the uh, average annual growth rate is also quite large. Um, okay. Um, so we tried the projected employment growth rates for the broad occupation groups. They are only uh, slightly uh, better, as we can see here. And we still see a negative growth rate for architects, planners, um, surveyors, and designers. So the growth rates are not uh, showing the high demand for uh, SNT professionals that we are actually seeing in other data, such as uh, the Professional Regulatory Commission's uh, data. Um, here is a list of occupations, disciplines not covered in the LFS because there are no codes for the LFS. And we can see that there are many uh, for which there are actually uh, professionals available in the country who are actually uh, practicing these disciplines. And yet the LFS does not have those codes. There are example are your computer information research scientists, your robotics engineer, your material science and engineering. There are also cross-cutting occupations that are uh, identified by the VLS Jobs Fit 2022 report that do not have separate codes, but they are classified under the uh, a larger category. For example, game developer is classified under web and multimedia developers. Um, if we now look at these results, we see that um, the sample size of the LFS needs to be increased to ensure good quality data for the purpose of projecting future SNT human resource 
requirements for particular occupations. PSA should also include in the LFS four digit codes for cross cutting and emerging occupations. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, can we ask Chris now? Thank you, Sir Toots. So, uh, for my part, I'm going to be discussing the industry perspective for the future as a TD man. Uh, next slide, please. Now, we can all here agree that STEM plays, uh, science and technology, engineering, mathematics, and statistics plays a critical role in our society. So, these fields not only contribute to the creation of knowledge, but they also help in the development of technologies. Uh, to address national and global issues. However, we have not been paying much attention to these fields. In fact, our uh, public spending on R&D is relatively low compared to other countries, as pointed out by several studies. However, our current reality is that rapid technological changes are starting to cause major challenges to the labor market, wherein uh, demand for high skilled workers are accelerating because of their capacity to work alongside machines. However, the demand for low and middle skilled administrative workers are dwindling because they are being replaced. Uh, cross country overall impacts of technology, of course, they differ, but uh, what we found is that advanced economies are getting more affected by these. Now, the silver lining to this story is that the workers can survive this changing labor market depending on their capacity to adapt and retrain themselves through education. So what we are trying to do in this uh, study is to uh, project or to assess how the demand and supply of STEM workers in the Philippines will change in response to our growing economy. Next slide, please. Okay, so for my part, I use census, the latest census uh, 2015 and 2010. So first we studied the characteristics of our STEM graduates. In 2015, uh, we grouped them based on five broad categories. So life sciences, physical sciences, math and statistics, computing IT, and engineering. And we found that around 5% of our labor force belong to the SMT group. Next slide, please. In terms of employment, employment is relatively high in the Philippines at 99.7%, and so is true for uh, STEM graduates. But uh, the labor force participation of these STEM graduates is higher than the national average, is actually 86.6%, suggesting the high demand for them. Uh, we also noticed, though, that uh, female STEM graduates are not there are fewer female STEM graduates in the labor force as compared to males because it's only 72.5% ang kanilang participation compared to the 92.7% for uh, male STEM graduates. Next slide. Now, um, in forecasting the future supply and uh, future supply, what we need to look at are two aspects. No? Production rate, how many uh, new STEM workers are being produced, and the survival rate, how many of them are actually staying in the labor force. So this uh, figure gives us the production rate of new STEM workers per age group. So in the x-axis, we have the age groups, and on the y-axis, we have the production rate. We can see two, uh, two colors there now, medyo mataas, no? That's the blue and the yellow, that's computing and IT, and engineering. So it suggests the popularity of these fields. Um, consistently, uh, <laughs> consistently, we will notice that uh, the highest propensity to join the STEM workforce is actually on the onset, but pagpapasok pa lang sila ng tertiary education, so around uh, 15, 19, 20, 24. And then, uh, even on later uh, age groups, no, later stages in life, engineering and computing and IT still encourages workers to transition to these fields. Next slide, please. So another thing to know is that how many of these graduates actually stay in the labor force? Because that would give us an idea, no, na, uh, uh, what will our future supply be? So. Uh, similarly, on the x-axis for this figure, we have the age groups. Tapos on the y-axis, we have the probability of them staying on the workforce. So if we can see yung gray na line, that's 
mathematics and statistics. So graduates of mathematics and statistics, they leave the workforce relatively earlier than their peers. So around the age of 25, 29, that's, that's a workforce. Uh, in contrast, the yellow line, naman, that's computing and IT. So they, naman, they stay longer in the workforce and they work even beyond their retirement age. Tapos, other fields, physical sciences, life sciences, engineering, they just follow the uh, normal decay and uh, retire around the age of 55, 59, 60, 65. Next slide, please. So if we combine our information on the production rate and the survival rate, we can come up with a projection of our future supply. So in the future, we can expect that we will have more uh, STEM workers. The biggest growth will, will come from computing IT, saka engineering fields. We noticed though that maybe because of the popularity of computing and IT fields, um, their supply will overtake the supply of engineers. On the demand side, naman, uh, we forecasted this using the projected growth of the Philippine economy and worker, uh, combining this with our computed worker productivity for the past years. So here, we, we noticed that the uh, two of the mo most popular or most demanded jobs for the future for 2020 and 2025 would be computing IT and engineering. But we can see here that we will need more engineers than workers with computing and IT backgrounds. So if we combine our information for supply and demand, we can come up with this gap. Um, this means that domestically, without considering our options abroad, no international market, we will have a surplus of workers with computing and IT background. Next slide, please. So we also uh, disaggregated our projected demand by industry. And uh, what we notice here is that you industry that wherein the demand for these workers talaga will come from ay yung ano, other services. And this constitute yung professional scientific and technical activities, administrative support services, accommodation and food service activities, education, human health, um, arts, entertainment, and recreation. So in currently, you know, less than uh, eight percent, less than 10% yung contribution ng other services to the current TVA, but in the future, a lot of the demand for STEM workers will come from this small, ano, small group. Next slide, please. Okay, so there are several lessons that can be gained from this study. First, as uh, we have shown in our production rate uh, figure, uh, in providing scholarship, timing is very important. No? As we have seen, the highest propensity to enter the STEM fields is around the beginning of the tertiary level. So if we have res our resources, we should focus our resources on, on at this point. Um, it is also important to understand how other factors affect our supply of the STEM workers. For example, they're already in the labor force, pero may nangyayari pa din, kaya napabawasan tayo ng STEM workers. Um, questions that need answer, or we need to look into things such as, bakit nga ba earlier nag exit yung uh, graduates of maths and statistics? Or why are fewer fem uh, STEM graduates na females entering the labor force as compared with males? And the final point that I want to raise here is that, um, of course, we know that providing scholarship is important. However, at the same time, we also need to boost the demand for these scholarships. You know? And the way that we can do that is to uh, make both parents and children understand the role and importance of the STEM workforce in our society. So how do we do that? In the early 90s and the, uh, early 2000s, I remember, nung bata kami, we have these uh, shows no, on TV, Siniskwela and Mathinique. So these shows were great. Um, it made us curious. It made us want to be scientists, astronauts, mathematicians. However, 
you need to adapt to the current times. Next slide, please. So, uh, children and housewives today, they're no longer on TV. A lot of them are ano, uh, always on YouTube or uh, social media. And the idea that I'm floating here is that why don't we use those platforms para dun sa ating ano, para, pa, to market our STEM STEM programs. So I recently discovered this um, vlogger, Oliver Austria. He's actually an architect. And what he does in his channel is that um, he teaches, but he explains what an architect does. He teaches um, how to make plates, but it's all fun. It makes you, I uh, know, it makes you want to try architecture. So that's the idea. Now, maybe if we want to market STEM, uh, STEM fields, maybe we can make use of these platforms and I know, um, partner with these vloggers, no? just, just to make uh, children more curious about, uh, about our occupations, s and occupations. And maybe through this, we can encourage them to join the workforce later on in their life. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, can we have Charlie now? The academy. Not only is the Academy a contributor to the development of SNT through its research activities, but it is also a stakeholder in the SNT labor market by supplying graduates to the pool of SNT manpower. Demand and supply projections in this study show that by 2025, there will be an undersupply of SNT workers in life sciences, physical sciences, mathematics, and statistics and engineering. Consequently, uh, there will be a need for more graduates in these discipline groups. On the other hand, there will be a projection, projected oversupply of workers in information technology and consequently a need for fewer graduates in these discipline groups. Hence, it is reasonable for government to plan for more SNT graduates for most of the uh, disciplines. While graduates in SNT are projected in this study to be generally increasing in the next five years, there are factors that have impact on attainment of this projected trend. Increasing the enrollment and number of graduates in SNT requires the development of student interest and capability in SNT and the reduction in the number of SNT students failing to graduate on time. Also, producing more graduates would not be enough to meet the projected undersupply of manpower in most SNT disciplines. We also need to consider the quality of education. Ensuring the quality of SNT education means working for improvement in teaching quality and school facilities and ensuring sufficient qualified faculty and relevant courses and degree programs. In the following slides, uh, we will be listing several questions or issues regarding the production of more SNT graduates and the quality of SNT education. Answers to these questions or issues are necessary inputs to the crafting of policies that would caution the country's economy against adverse effects of fire. On, the, in, on increasing the SNT enrollment and producing more SNT graduates, we have the following questions or issues. First, how effective is the K-12 curriculum in providing students with SNT knowledge and skills? And second, how effective are science sections and science schools in producing SNT students? Are there enough science sections and science schools in the country? The K-12 curriculum, science schools, and uh, science sections are all means of exposing students to SNT, thereby developing their interest and of providing them with capability in SNT. If these three avenues are effective in developing the child's interest and capability in SNT, plus the influence of environment, including perceived income from SNT jobs, then the chance of the child enrolling in an SNT degree program is higher. The third question is, how effective are the following in reducing percentage of SNT students who do not graduate on time, entrance and IQ exams, scholarships and financial assistance, counseling and health care for students? And the fourth question is, what methods are used to match students with degree programs and how effective are they in reducing the percentage of students who fail to graduate on time? Answers to these questions are important because the number of students earning their SNT degree on time directly affects the number of new graduates entering the SNT workforce. 
on uh, quality of education. An indicator of the quality of education is the passing rate in the, in the PRC examinations. Uh, PRC data for the period 2012 to 2016 shows that the average percent passing in the PRC examinations is, is lower than 50% in the following degree programs. In engineering and technology group, it's uh, marine engineering, agricultural engineering, civil engineering, electronics engineering, and geodetic engineering. In IT-related disciplines, library science, in, <clears throat> in medical and allied disciplines, occupational therapy, radiologic technology, mid midwifery, nursing, respiratory therapy, and veter veterinary medicine. And in natural science, it's geology, which has a lower than 50% passing rate on the average. Since in this study, engineering and technology is already projected to have an undersupply of manpower in 2025, the poor performance of some engineering and technology degree programs will aggravate this condition in the future. Now we go to the uh, following questions or issues on quality of education. One, do schools meet standards on school fa facilities? School facilities uh, includes uh, such uh, as libraries, laboratories, uh, project working areas, and classrooms. Uh, it is important that these facilities are complete, match the needs of the degree programs, are updated, well equipped, and are used by students. Uh, two, number two, what is the impact of faculty development through PhD scholarship and increased pay, benefits, and incentives on faculty retention? <clears throat> we will definitely need more SNT faculty in order to produce more graduates. But if the recent decreasing trend in the overall number of faculty, as shown by CHED data, continues, then this study forecasts a lack of SNT teachers by 2022 uh, school year. There are uh, three. Uh, are the, are the current SNT degree programs relevant? There are two approaches used currently to determine the relevance of SNT degree programs. One, research studies, and the second is the approach used by Quismorio Chris, et al. Uh, of PIDS in their uh, research study titled Assessing the Alignment of Philippine Higher Education with Emerging Demands for Data Science and Analytics Workforce, conducted in 2019. There should be a regular assessment of the relevance of existing SNT degree programs so that any deficiency could be corrected, making the country better prepared in coping with the disruptions brought by fire. Answers to the previously discussed questions and issues are important to the government's overall policy and program that would caution the expected shocks from fire. Studies must be conducted to provide answers to those questions and issues. DepEd, CHED, DOST, and PIDS should collaborate and lead in the conduct of these studies. The partnership among these agencies should be formalized through MOAS or similar instruments that would provide for sharing of resources and data, among others. In the course of their functions, these agencies collect data that are useful in the studies to be conducted. The, the agencies must always ensure that the data they collect are correct, complete, and correctly encoded. Quality data is necessary in crafting policies and developing programs. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Can we have CP now? Good morning, everyone. The next series of slides look into the SNT workforce in government. I looked at the DBM data on plantilla positions and the annual reported data on filled and vacant positions. I also used surveys and tracer studies of the DOSD, SUCs, and HEIs. The government bureaucracy is the single largest employer of SNT personnel. The largest population of SNT workers are the doctors and nurses in DOH hospitals, the instructors and professors in the 102 SUCs, and agriculture related positions in DA and DAR. SNT positions from the majority of, of uh, plantilla positions in the department are in the DOH, DPWH, DOST, and in PSA. Next slide, please. The median salary grade of SNT personnel is SG15, which is equivalent to about 33,000 pesos per month. The largest unfilled positions are those of nurses, medical doctors, 
and senior level professors in SUCs. An increase in vacancies is also seen for senior engineer positions in the DPWH and IT personnel. Next slide, please. Aside from the current vacancies in the medical field, more nurses and doctors will be required by the government in the future as DOH hospitals expand. About half of the faculty population of SUCs are actually in SNT courses like agriculture and engineering, and it is also in these fields where PhD level faculty members are in demand. Next slide. In DA and DAR, there are more than 12,000 agriculture positions, which are filled by graduates coming from 62 SUCs offering agri related degrees. In the DPWH, most positions are filled, except for senior level posts. It is noteworthy that the DPWH also employs more than 30,000 contractual or project based engineers. Next slide, please. The DNR employs the most foresters and environmental science graduates in the country. DOST, on the other hand, has over 4,000 SRS positions, and this excludes the 594 meteorologists in Pagasa. Finally, the NSA or PSA employs more than 2,000 statisticians and could possibly require more with the implementation of the National ID program. Next slide. As mentioned previously, most of the S&T positions in government, except those mentioned uh, that, that have uh, unfilled positions, are easily filled up, uh, except for senior level posts with strict academic requirements. This slide shows the ideal education attainment of personnel for various types of s &T. Service and laboratories require some master's degree level personnel, but mostly bachelor's degree holders uh, are required in laboratories. For research institutes, ideally there should be a pyramid-like distribution of bachelor's, master's, and PhD level personnel. Uh, teaching at the college level, an equal number of BS, MS, and PhD uh, are required. And for R&D management, such as uh, those in DOST councils, staff members with a technical background are ideal. However, the nature of their work actually dictates a more managerial background for postgraduate degrees rather than an MS or PhD degree in s &T. This is not the current distribution in s and offices and, and therefore the lack of applicants with MS and PhD and even management degrees have resulted in many offices removing the requirement of higher degrees as a requirement for senior level positions. Next slide, please. Putting a spot spotlight on RDIs, their output as research institutes are comparatively lower than university-based research groups. This can be remedied by hiring more PhDs, restructuring their bureaucracy, and a promotion system that is based on research productivity and not only in terms of years in service. Next slide. Finally, in summary, s and workers in the medical fields are most in demand in government. Second, entry to mid-level s and positions are satisfied by the labor force. However, senior level positions are where most vacancies, vacancies are found. Third, the educational background for senior level s and positions are not achieved. For example, PhDs in research and teaching and management degrees for R&D management office. And finally, a systemic change uh, is required for RDIs to fully function as research centers. Thank you. Back to you, Toots. Thank you, CP. Um, just to give a some ways forward uh, also some uh, key learnings from our study uh, uh, the results really of our study suggest that re we, it's really important for us to in, in snt human resources to prepare ourselves from for the impact of technology especially amid the new normal uh, while the diverse snt occupations differ in growth potential in terms of employment 
and therefore some occupations appear more crucial. I should say only a small portion of the country's workforce underscores the need for a uh, very strong government support of most of our SNP disciplines. Disciplines that are marketable in, in and end of themselves, industrial engineering, for example, need not be given as much support as other fields, but disciplines that have declining employment levels, but that are con uh, considered extremely needed to improve productivity in some sector or industry, such as those those that have to do with agriculture, biology, chemistry, and possibly even chemical engineering should be provided much more government support. We provided a lot of uh, projections in our study based on the labor force survey, the population census, various admin data, not just projections, but actually also just some uh, profile. And uh, this uh, uh, the great need of our economy for SNP workers to support uh, its projected growth in the next few years would require a massive boost in support for current and future SNP. And this cannot be attained by the government alone, but should be a joint undertaking that also requires a, you know, a thinking out of the box uh, involving the private sector as well as the academic institutions. There's also a need to encourage our... We need a strong demand. Aggressive media campaigns, maybe two-pronged social media platforms like FB, Instagram, and YouTube could be used to reach both students and parents now. It's important to make use of social media influencers, especially as poster boys and poster girls for advocating SNP careers, further uh, marketing SNP as a financial vi financially viable career may entice parents to boost their children to enter this field. DOST, together with DepEd, may actually want to consider implementing an annual regarding their dream jobs, similar to the, a survey that's actually been conducted uh, by the Korea's Ministry of Education and Korea, Korea Research Institute for Vocational Education and Training, uh, an annual poll on school age dream job that has been actually been uh, conducted since the 1970s. In one of the uh, Korean novellas that I just recently watched uh, on Netflix a few days ago called Reply 1978, it was pointed out that children in the 1970s in Korea aspired to be part of, one, either the military or government. In the 1990s, there was a shift. Most children wanted to become scientists, believe it or not. And these days, another shift. YouTubers now are on the top of the list of childhood dream jobs for young Koreans. Imagine, uh, YouTubers. <laughs> okay, so anyways, knowing these kinds of statistics could actually help DOST to be more strategic in its advocacy campaigns, not only with the young, but with their parents. Next, it's equally important to affect the supply of SNT workers. For instance, why, are few, we have, why do we have fewer female SNT graduates joining the labor force as compared with males, although the numbers are much higher than the usual average across the entire population. Still, uh, why, why are specific SNT graduates, for instance, those in mathematics and statistics, exiting the labor force much earlier than other SNT graduates? These are puzzles, no? and such things should be uh, um, uh, researched more into, uh, in more detail in order to obtain uh, behavioral insights and craft necessary policies to incentivize people to continue to participate in the economy. However, uh, further, it's, it must be noted that generally the highest propensity to uh, join the SNT field is the onset of the ter tertiary level. So we need a lot of financial support uh, concentrated at this point. Meanwhile, academia has a variety of functions. It was pointed out that we need to produce knowledge through research. We, it must be able to develop talents and innate capabilities of students. It's important team works on developing its capability for quality learning. Academia must be responsive in the manpower and know-how needs of uh, industry, government, and society. So curriculum reviewed, abolished if they're no longer necessary, and new, new ones developed. Research agendas also of academic institutions need to be uh, reviewed and revised regularly. Forecasts of enrollment and graduates in the next based on growth rates show increasing in the number of graduates in all SNT discipline group. Engineering and uh, technology will be the dominant discipline group in these years in terms of graduates followed by IT-related disciplines. It's recommended that an evaluation of skills taught uh, to engineering and technology students as well as 
disciplines be undertaken to identify any mismatches between skills currently taught and skills uh, required in the future. There may be also scope to improve not only technical skills, but also soft skills of our learners. A result of these studies of uh, these studies would be uh, adjustments in the curricula and research uh, agenda of higher educational institutions in the production of graduates. Sure. During the 41st annual science uh, uh, last year in July, Dr. Uh, William Padolina, a uh, former uh, all, uh, academician and uh, former board member of PID, has highlighted the possibility of mismatches between the skills of the country's S&T graduates and the skills demanded by jobs. The country may soon be affected by developments in emerging fire technologies. There is therefore a need to assess degree programs and research agendas of higher educational institutions on their ability and capacity to cope with technological developments and ensure that we have a set of future ready s and human resources that will develop a niche for us and bring us more prosperity. Thank you and good um, Thank you very much, Mr. Chief, for your crisp uh for your concise but crisp uh, presentation. Um, before we uh, proceed to the reactions of our uh, discussions, may I add that aside from those who presented today, the study team has two other members, and they are uh, Dr. Janet Cuenca, who is a supervising research specialist at the PIDS, and Ms. Chana uh, Flor Bisman, who is a research specialist at PIDS. So let us now hear the reactions of the different sectors. So for this part, uh, the, the organizers invited representatives from the private sector, academia, and, and government to uh, provide their insights in the study's findings and recommendations. And um, first to give his reaction is uh, the president of the Se Semiconductor and Electronics Industries in the Philippines Foundation. Um, may I call on uh, Dr. Danilo Lachita? Sir? Thank you, Sheila. Uh, I too, it's my former professor at La Salle. And hello, everyone. Of course, I see you just to. I mean, much, much of the uh, thank you for the invitation and for the uh, uh, in depth presentations. Um, much of the uh, results, the findings, I really can't disagree with. In fact, uh, uh, just to note some of the comments, for example, uh, from uh, Ms. Tabunda. Uh, she noted that robotics uh, was part of what you look at. And if anything else, the way the industry is moving today, and I'm talking about the electronics industry, um, in, at the onset of COVID, and of course, in the interest of efficiency and quality control, automation would be a key success factors for many of the uh, factories. So robotics uh, essentially would be, uh, I guess, uh, gonna be in high demand, higher demand. Um, and then uh, for Chris Abrigo, uh, yes, there seems to be a, a mismatch. Uh, there is a gap really. And the interesting thing she said was uh, females. Uh, there are few more, fewer females joining the workforce. It's ironic because in our industry, 80% of our workers are females. But unfortunately, uh, well, maybe one of the reasons why females are in short supply for the industry is because perhaps uh, the IT industry, the BPO industry is sexier. And, uh, you know, uh, we could use a lot more females, especially the science and technology area. Now, um, when I say 80% of the females, that's over 300,000 workers that we have, female workers. Now, traditionally, uh, we would be hiring high school graduates. Uh, of course, science and technology, the STEM graduates would be uh, quite useful, the output of the STEM program. But uh, our constraints really are we cannot hire uh, people uh, under 18 years old. But as I've mentioned earlier, the evolution of the industry, the, the, focus, on, uh, the focus on artificial intelligence, the focus on automation, we would need to upgrade, upskill our workers. And needless to say, uh, when I uh, upskilling our workers would require more of the female workers uh, in the industry that are going to be uh, required. Now, uh, in what areas? Well, Charlie also mentioned an oversupply in IT and undersupply in science and technology. 
And I think part of, and, and this is on us, the industry probably has done a, a good job of advertising or informing or marketing the jobs that we have available. So maybe uh, let me take this opportunity to kind of give you a preview of uh, what we have by way of the evolution of the industry. We have our, uh, uh, what we call the product and technology holistic strategy, which was uh, funded by DPI and administered by BOSDP Shared. And essentially, we've identified uh, products and uh, services that the Philippines should embark on uh, in the coming five years so that we can, we, we still are the highest exporter of the Philippines. In 2019, we registered $43.3 billion of exports. But there is an opportunity to further increase that and for example, 70% of that export is in uh, semiconductors. Now, unfortunately, we cannot uh, move, uh, you know, down the value chain because we, ca we can't have a commercially uh, viable way for FABC because of the high power cost and, uh, and the poor quality. However, we can move up the value chain in terms of IC design. So what we're doing right now as part of that roadmap is to uh, institute measures to increase our capacity, uh, human capacity in terms of supporting a new industry in IC design. So what will that involve? Well, uh, you know, uh, device physics, microelectronics, uh, and of, of course the, the elements of IC design, but we will cover that in terms of the IC design training labs that we will be setting up initially in Laguna with our partner school uh, La Salle in Laguna, but all, and also in Mindanao with USTP. But the problem is to be able to have an understanding of IC design, you have to have solid base in microelectronics and device physics. So those are probably the expansion areas. Now, as far as the other 30% of our exports, we've identified um, in different sectors. For example, uh, again, going back to robotics, uh, new products that can be made in the Philippines would be cobots, uh, collaborative robots, right? And so we need robotics, automation skills, uh, artificial intelligence, internet of things. So the telecommunications background that would involve in those, uh, uh, you know, uh, sciences. And then the other thing that we've tried to do, and hopefully this would uh, take have some traction today, is eight years ago, we've, uh, we've uh, given Chad suggestions on how to revise eight uh, uh, courses in the technical discipline, but I know how difficult it is to implement changes with the established uh, curricula. So the approach we're taking is to uh, work with particular schools to uh, on the uh, six elective courses that would cater to specific sectors of the industry, whether it's renewable energy or, uh, or uh, telecommunications. Uh, and so those are the initiatives that we're doing. And oh, by the way, I would like to mention that uh, Unlike, uh, say, for example, the power industry or other uh, industries, we our industry doesn't require PRC licenses unless you're uh, signing uh, uh, plans and drawings for mechanical and electrical uh, fields, right? But the process engineers, the chemists, we don't need PRC license. All we need is a solid background in the engineering uh, courses and skills that I've uh, mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we appreciate hearing the initiatives at the foundation to um, accelerate uptake of STEM courses. Okay, uh, let's now proceed to our next uh, reactor and um, we will hear from the Dean of the Mindanao State University Ligan Institute of Technology. Uh, and my, may I call on Dr. Ephraim, Ephraim uh, Metilio, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. And could you please, if you could please uh, turn on your video, sir, so we can see you? Is it possible? Okay, okay. So is that all right yes. now? Yes, it's all right now. We can see you now. And I think you were sharing your screen before. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> DOST Undersecretary, Dr. Renato Sridum, uh, DOST Undersecretary, uh, Dr. Rena Guevara, 
Uh, DOSCI Director, Dr. Giuseppe Dio, uh, former DOSC Secretary, Dr. William Pagodina, uh, my friends, uh, Dr. Mariet Sumagaisai, Dr. Danini Samarita of uh, NAST and NRCP, and uh, all the distinguished guests uh, today, fellow workers in the government, uh, good morning. So commendations uh, to the authors for their output. Yeah? Uh, So uh, the report basically highlights the three roles of the academe, and this uh, was uh, also mentioned uh, several times by the authors. And uh, I don't need to dwell on this so much. So my response uh, will be will revolve around uh, these three major roles of the academe. So uh, academe, I mean um, higher education level. So uh, reaction point one is improvement of data management systems. So basically, uh, the authors highlighted limitations, uh, but uh, essentially, uh, it also highlights that we need more accurate information for a much better response. So improving data management systems in the government agencies should be given top priority. Part of the improvement requires the hiring of uh, statisticians, mathematicians, related disciplines, and data scientists. And also, we need to improve on the tracing of ongoing uh, STI students and graduates. On response to FIRE, or the Fourth Industrial Revolution, since the Fourth Industrial Revolution disrupts business models and reconfigures the labor market, Focus on the specific skill sets and retooling should go hand in hand with building a deeper foundation among STI students on critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, and adaptation, which was also highlighted by the report. Uh, I was a bit expecting an assessment of how aligned with FIRE the content of existing STI academic programs in the country. Uh, new fire disciplines need to be identified and developed so we can produce uh, innovative future scientists that can reconcile fire and the sustainable economic development in the country. Researchers and modelers should keep in mind the interdependence of disciplines like engineers. You cannot produce engineers without uh, mathematicians, physicists, and chemists, you know, for example. Uh, point three is uh, address the mismatch and balance the supply and demand. So to do this, uh, academe needs to adapt, just my opinion, my suggestion, uh, we need to adopt the german Humboldtian framework you know, where government and private sectors identify sustainable economy boosting industries. Uh, my, my bias is on forest resources and the blue economy and create a demand for STI workers who will be educated and trained uh, with partner universities. Ched, uh, well, the Commission of Higher Education needs to regulate the supply side, while government and private sectors increase the demand side. Uh, point four is on governance and practices. As also already mentioned by the authors, Further, we need to further increase investments in STI research. Now we're lagging behind in Southeast Asia, even in Southeast Asia. More investment on basic research to develop more emerging technologies. And as already mentioned by the authors, academe needs to continuously revise and make programs adaptive. But uh, recently, CHED ordered uh, issued a same mode that graduate programs should put premium on research and publication even at the master's level. So we also need to work to harder on changing stereotypes and the reputation that STI courses are difficult. Now, the USD IEC team, the academe and all sectors should continue to promote that it is fun to do science and technology courses and uh, already mentioned by authors to make use of the social media. And my uh, last, uh, Point uh, is the impact of COVID-19 should also be considered in forecasting or modeling. Well, this is quite unprecedented. I think the authors uh, had 
uh, were, were prepared on this, no? uh, their, their study was well before the pandemic. So the main negative impact, uh, as we felt in our institution now, is reduction in enrollment. Yeah? Although in IAT, uh, the reduction is 5%, more or less. Uh, and due to, this is due to the drastic shift to online learning, which tends also to exclude poor students who cannot afford to pay for gadget and connectivity. A positive uh, impact, I consider positive because uh, it opened some new avenues. For example, uh, I, I saw on uh, uh, ABS-CBN news channel, the uh, USC Undersecretary uh, Guevara mentioning about uh, a proposal to establish a Virology Institute of the Philippines, or BIP. So I, I, I believe that the BIP and online mode of education should create demand for STI graduates of emerging technologies already enumerated by the authors and classical sciences like biology, mathematics, physics, chemistry. So finally, uh, well, please allow me to end with a quote from the columnist Shaira Panela, who wrote that uh, Filipino astrophysicist Reina Reyes said that scientists are like radioactive particles. If you put them together, you get critical mass, and that's when things start happening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Matilio. Okay, and for our last uh, reactor, uh, we have what is Executive Director of the Senate Economic Planning Office, the Senate of the Philippines, uh, Mr. Marwin Salazar. Marwin, could you please turn on your... Um, Audio, please. Hi, good morning. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, sirs and moms. And I'd like to commend uh, the PIDS and the DOST STI for this uh, worthwhile undertaking to study the uh, future SNP human resources needs in the Philippines. Now, much has been said about fire. Um, we know that technology is fast evolving with developments in the field, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, big data analytics, nanotechnology, internet of things, 3D printing, energy storage, material science, quantum computing, and genetics and biotechnology. All of these are building on and amplifying one another. Now, some of these, as mentioned by Dr. Lachika, are already being used by Philippine industries, although in varying degrees of adoption. For instance, the current industry use of big data in the Philippines is relatively small compared to other countries. However, a handful of companies and industry leaders are starting to embrace big data analytics. Thus, the Philippines is projected to be a big player in big data analytics, especially with the increasing use of internet and social media in the country. In the field of robotics, for instance, as also uh, discussed by Dr. Lechica, the number of our robotics applications in businesses increased considerably in recent years, primarily to enhance productivity. The most automated countries in the world are Korea, Singapore, Germany, and Japan. The Philippines is among the lowest in the region for automation adoption with a robot density of three industrial robots installed per 10,000 employees. Uh, that was in 2016, and the country is behind Singapore, Thailand, and Malaysia. Now, while these impending changes hold great promise, many of them also pose major challenges requiring proactive adaptation by governments, corporations, societies, and individuals. Artificial intelligence, for instance, could lead to significant labor displacement in the country, and this is a major concern, as mentioned in the paper, for an economy like the Philippines, which relies heavily on services sector. Indeed, all industries, in all, across all other industries, there is clear evidence that the technologies that underpin the, fort, the fire, aside from shaping the future, are having a major impact on business, government, and people. That is why if we want to be able to adapt to the fast-changing technology, we must not just rely on one sector, like the private sector or the government or the academe. This will require a multi-stakeholder approach, cooperation, and coordination. In the future, technological innovation will bring long-term gains in efficiency and productivity. Transportation and communication costs will drop, logistics and global supply chains will become more effective and the cost of trade will diminish, all of which will open new markets and drive economic growth. The fire also has potential to raise global incomes and improve the quality of life for populations around the world. Technology has made possible new products and services that increase the efficiency and pleasure of our personal lives. Ordering a cab, booking a flight, buying a product, making a payment, 
listening to music, watching a film, playing a game, any of these can now be done remotely. However, fire could also yield greater inequality, particularly in its potential to disrupt labor markets. As automation substitutes for labor across the entire economy, the net displacement of workers by machines might exacerbate the gap between returns to capital and returns to labor. On the other hand, it is also possible that the displacement of workers by technology will in aggregate result in a net increase in safe and rewarding jobs. Now, um, over the next decade or two, around 56% of all employment in, ASEAN, in the ASEAN 5 is at high risk of displacement due to technology. The industries with high capacity for automation are hotels, restaurants, wholesale and retail trade, construction and manufacturing, while industries with low automation risk include education and training as well as human health and social work. The high risk occupations in the Philippines are shop and salespersons and demonstrators who number about 2.2 million workers. Jobs resistant to computerization involve extensive non-routine abstract tasks that require judgment, problem solving, intuition, persuasion, and creativity. Now, um, in general, the main task of the government is to support s &T disciplines and to create a conducive environment for cultivating and securing s &T in the country. It can do so by enacting policies and providing the necessary budgetary support. Now, both houses of Congress have already passed important legislations related to reducing the cost of doing business, setting the regulatory framework for competition to prosper, and improving trade, investment, and capital market environments in the country. Now, some of the laws that were enacted to foster innovation and support SNT disciplines were one is uh, RA 1936, or the strengthening the governance and defining the scope of the Philippine Science High School system, which uh, establishes one um, Philippine Science High School campus in each of the administrative regions of the country. We also have RA 10931 or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, which uh, provides free tuition and miscellaneous fees in state universities and colleges. We also have RA 2067, um, the Act to Integrate, Coordinate, and Intensify Scientific and Technological Research and Development in the country, wherein scholarships are awarded to poor, talented, and deserving students who belong to families whose social economic status do not exceed the set of values of certain indicators. We also have RA 7687, or the Scholarships Act, which provides scholarships, slots to poor but deserving students whose families' annual gross income do not exceed the poverty threshold limit. The scholars must, be, must pursue a course in the field of science, mathematics, and engineering, leading to a bachelor science degree. We also have RA 10612, or the Fast Track Science and Technology Scholarships Act, which aims to strengthen the conscious science and technology education by fast tracking graduates in the sciences, mathematics, and engineering, who shall teach science and mathematics in secondary schools throughout the country. We also have RA 11293, or the Philippine Innovation Act, which was recently signed into law last April 2019. The, the law mandates the creation of the National Innovation Council that will steer the whole of government coordination and collaboration and to remove the fragmentation in the country's innovation and governance. We also have RA 11337 or the Innovative Startup, Startup Act, uh, which creates the Philippine Startup Development Program set to offer progress benefits and incentives for both startups and enablers. We also have 11035 or the Public Scientist Act, which gives more incentives to returning Philippine experts, scientists, inventors, and engineers who would share their expertise in the country. The aforementioned laws may not be sufficient, but they can be considered as ample steps in addressing some of the issues that we face today and can pre prepare us in facing the challenges in the future brought about by the fire. Certainly, more needs to be done in the coming months. We also have uh, pending bills right now in the Senate. Uh, for instance, we have the Science for Change program, which aims to achieve a high standard of science and technology in order to contribute to the development of the economy and society and to the improvement of the welfare of the nation in general. We also have a sci computer science act um, a bill which uh, designs and details the K-12 program, uh, a reformulation of the K-12 program to include computer science, computer literacy and information and communication technology as part of the basic subjects offered to all levels beginning kinder. We also have a nuclear science and nuclear engineering scholarship uh, bill, um, which aims to create uh, a national scholarship program for studies in nuclear science and nuclear engineering. Then we also have 
Information and Communication Technology Transfer Bill, which establishes regional centers of excellence for ICT in all provinces of the Philippines. Now, um, let me give uh, five specific comments to the presentation. Um, for instance, on the need for appropriate quality and uh, quality data, this is not only apply for the SNT sector, but for all sectors in the country. I suggest revisiting the multi-agency body and their developing statistical system to making it to making it a multi-sectoral task force that would involve other stakeholders outside the government. It periodically identifies data needs of the government um, on both primary and secondary data. I also want to stress the point that the identification of data needs has to be strongly linked to the monitoring and evaluation of policies, programs, projects, and activities in government. This also calls for the immediate establishment of an m &E system in every agency of government and the implementation of such. This should really be given time, budget, and priority by the government now. I couldn't agree more to the recommendations made under the paper regarding the improvements that need to be done under the labor force survey. Now, on the future of SNT demand from the industry perspective, uh, industry demand for SNT skilled and professional workers would depend on the rate of their adaptation to the changes in technology brought about by the fire, as well as the demand for the goods and services that are the products of fire. Whether this demand for SNT workers will be met would depend on how the government will respond and other institutions like the academy and the training organizations, as well as the households. I agree that the provision for scholarships is not enough in order to address the supply problem of SNT graduates in the country. This requires a community-driven approach to, in, in order to address this issue on increasing the number of SNT human resources, as has been um, uh, expounded by Dr. Albert earlier on. Um, but having said that, may I know what variables were considered in estimating the future demand and supply of SNT workers? May I also know how future individual preferences were considered in the supply estimation model? and how future dynamics in the advancement of technology were considered in the demand estimation model. Now, in, on increasing enrollment and producing graduates, we all recognize the fact that SNT knowledge, competencies, and skills are not just applied in the SNT sector. As has been, has been also uh, mentioned in the presentation, uh, the use and application of SNT technologies is being done in almost all sectors of the economy, uh, whether, be it in agriculture, industry, or service sector. Thus, the demand for SNT competencies and skills is enormous and has become universal. My suggestion is why don't we make SNT a major component of every curriculum for all levels in the K to 12? We can replicate the standards and, and curriculum of science high schools to all public schools in the country, including the private schools in the region outside the metropolitan cities. After all, we're heading to that future where SNT will be the main thing as we move through the fire. Now, on quality of education, I agree that there should be a regular conduct of evaluation of the SNT degree programs, as well as the academic institutions providing these courses and other related trainings. But the aim shouldn't be coping with the disruptions brought about by fire. Instead, it should be adapting to the new technologies emerging from the fire. Lastly, on the SNT personnel and government, if we were to really implement e-governance in the whole bureaucracy, the government would actually need a lot of SNT personnel, especially information and computer technology professionals. Therefore, we would need a lot of IT and computing graduates in government who will have to work with the different SNT professionals in the different departments. I also agree with the idea of rethinking the research and, and development institutes in the government. That will be all. Thank you and good morning again. Thank you very much, um, Executive Director Delasar. Uh, when he was uh, mentioning about the, the various legislations and even the the, the proposed ones no, yeah, related to the SNT, um, I can't help but to think that, well, there is, in terms of policies, there is no shortage of policies that are promoting uh, SNT development in the country. Well, as, and also what, but as what he mentioned, that's only just one part of the equation. Okay, there are still other factors, you know, promoting the uh, development of science and technology in the Philippines. We are, um, okay, time check, it's 11.28, and we are supposed to uh, proceed now to the open forum, and we have 20 minutes to uh, for the open forum. And may I remind everyone uh, that uh, in, in case you have questions and everyone is, uh, uh, participants are, um, are encouraged to ask questions, you may use the chat box, and at the same time, 
you can also use the raise hand function of Cisco WebEx. But that is, at this point, before I uh, we start entertaining questions, may I ask for some brief remarks from our uh, um, presenters from our study team because there were some questions posed by our uh, by some of our um, um, discussants, by some of our reactors. Uh, for example, uh, Edi Salazar questioned um, has some question about the uh, demand estimation model. And then Dr. Mitilio has a question. He commented on um, if, if the study has found any results uh, relating to the alignment of the current STEM curriculum with the needs of industry. Thoughts or any of your uh, study team members can answer these questions? Uh, I mean, uh, regarding the point uh, uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Mitilio, um, uh, you know, I mean, we much as we'd like to to be able to cover so many things. Unfortunately, uh, we we first wanted to to tell a story about where things are. It's purely looking at where things have been, you know, uh, and where 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 things seem to be shaping as far as data is concerned. But uh, you know, we there there would be issues about uh, assessing the, the the current STEM curriculum. But to some extent, you know, you, you can get some proxy information from that, at least on the aggregate, by looking at, uh, you know, some of the information from our um, from from admin data of uh, the, the passing rates in certain certain disciplines that would suggest really uh, uh, where in terms of quality. Uh, we know, and we know already that you know there are certain universities that are doing far better than compared with others. You know, I mean, uh, this, this has been a this has been a standard uh, uh, that that we've seen all along. Uh, but re regarding the question of uh, Merwin, uh, uh, perhaps I, I I could throw that to to Chris uh, the, to to specifically identify uh, explain the methodology about the demands and supply estimation, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, sir. So for the supply, uh, we basically use the trends, no? So how did our supply for s &T graduates grow uh, within the past five years? We basically used the census 2010 and 2015. So using those trends, Finor word lang namin siya. For the demand demand, we use the input output table. So yung production and uh, gross value added. Um, for industry and then uh, we translated that to worker productivity for worker productivity so ginamit din namin yung forecast for the economy if if uh, world bank is saying or uh, pdp is saying that our economy will grow uh, this much in the coming years how many more workers are we going to need to achieve that growth so parang ganun lang po um we can you sabi niyo sir your suggestion about uh, a more sophisticated model using preferences we can do that but we would need a richer data to be able to do that. Y yung kasi ang pinaka limitation ng group, um, we were only working with the data that is available to us. T talagang in stretch namin siya to the extent possible. So that that is what we were able to come up with. Thank you very much, uh, Toots and, and uh, Chris. Okay, I don't see any uh, questions yet in our chat box and no hands yet being raised. Okay, let me just let me start the ball rolling uh, for our open forum. I was quite struck by the presentation of Chris. No, yung uh, pinakita niya yung yeah we have surplus of engineers, blah blah blah. But uh, you you saw I know young graduates of statistics and and uh, math uh, leading their peers earlier. Where do you think do they go? Are they are they uh, venturing in other fields? Uh, any 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 insight on this? That's one. And um, and Charlie mentioned there was this particular question that he asked. It's very insightful. So, niya, how effective are science? Sections and science schools in producing SNT students. Okay, but um, more so, I think it is also important to determine how effective are our teachers in imparting appreciation of SNT, so that the students will be encouraged to pursue STEM degrees in higher education and STEM occupations. No, um, 
kasi if you will recall uh towards the Bernido couple the, the physicists no Christopher and Maria Victoria Bernido they introduced this innovative teaching framework to um optimize student academic for performance despite you know existing socioeconomic limitations faced by the Philippine education system and and their that innovative model showed no it was it was uh, successful in the sense that uh, those who took the program showed, exhibited, or demonstrated exemplary uh, performance in standardized standardized tests. So, what are your thoughts on this? Because important rin yun eh, na, of course, hindi lang yung hindi lang when it comes to policies, etc. But we should in, in, hindi lang in terms of making sure that the curriculum is suited to the needs of industry. But also making sure that the that those who are teaching science themselves, no, the the, the teachers, no, are are really have that uh, capability and also have that, you know, you 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 um, you what um uh scale to motivate also their students so that you know they they will appreciate science s and more. Yeah, uh, you know there there's so many things that we need to really consider when you're when you're looking at the current pool of 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 people that uh, will eventually get into SNT. Uh, certainly, we part of the that system also is is really the teach making sure that we are able to have the right kinds of. Uh, uh you know in a way very good mentors uh because sometimes th th this is this has been always a struggle not just in snt but the, across the entire educational institution uh the entire e education system as a whole that uh you know how how do we make sure that we are able to guide our young into becoming into maximizing their potentials uh unfortunately you know those kinds of things are are partly soft skills too. I mean, and these are these are these are partly you know um, personality oriented. So the question is, well, in the in educational institutions, are are we able to encourage uh, our current sets of of uh, teachers to become better teachers? I mean, to what extent are we really doing that? Um, I mean, and it's a complex mess because part of it is even if you wanted to teach, if the re your resources are not uh, are are kind of limited, you know. So there are a lot of uh, many things that we 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 need to to consider. So, but the the overall storyline seems to be that uh, we we need to recognize that it's a it's a changing world out there, and so unless the the I I, I can always remember the. You know this this video this this movie uh, that I watched in a in a years ago uh, of uh, a mentor in uh, in, in the U.S. who managed to make his his his, his students uh, pass uh, the the math uh, advanced placement exam in 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 California <laughs> and of course they were uh, initially it was thought that the he, the his students were were were, were um, were cheating no because all of a sudden they, they they all passed you know so how how do we do that i mean it's it's a big challenge no to to make sure that our teachers are are of quality as well and they're driven they i mean there are a few of them but then the the, the sad reality as was pointed out by charlie is that we're also facing uh you know of the possibility that the you have the, the pool even becoming even smaller okay Thank you very much, too. So, of course, your other um, um, colleagues in the team can also uh, provide their, their their insights. And we have some more questions from our participants. This one is from Francis Mark Kimba. Uh, do we have information on the difference of salary between male and males and females? Anyone can answer that? Quick response. Boots or anyone? Yeah, as far as I know, there are. I don't think we have any. Uh, Dr. Tabunda, yes. I don't think we have data on difference of salaries between males and females. It's not mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, okay, from Cheryl uh, Joe Denoga. Well, this is just a comment. It was pointed out that there was a huge over demand for other services compared to typical occupations. Maybe we can look into emerging occupations as the numbers for those other services from what I recall was 20%. Okay, and then this one is from um, Dr. Fabian Dairit. Um just a comment, we should realize that some of the more esoteric science are needed. For example, the environmental sciences, which support sustainability in the tourism industry and the future blue economy. And regarding the academy, we need more than scholarships. Academy also needs more support for laboratory facilities and faculty development. Indeed. Okay, uh, from Gerald uh, Joe Denoga, question to the panel, given the supply chain problem we encountered with the pandemic and the PIDS recommend disciplines, um, should we boost for a national economy that is internally robust and self-sufficient, like maybe more people to go into medical research or manufacturing engineers? Uh, well, certainly the, 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 the struggle now is that, um, you know, this pandemic, we we were clearly unprepared, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Uh, so we we already have a very limited set of human resources, particularly whether it's S and T or uh, specifically in the health sciences. Um, but the, the 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 challenge here is this: no, uh, we don't have data <laughs> that will tell us that story of what we will. Given that the change in the new normal, what what should we do? How can we retrofit? And even if we did. Uh, the thing is, it may be only an initial period. There, there, there's this struggle. You don't know whether the, the that change demand right now will be, is it short term? Is it medium term? I mean, and when we were looking at data already from the past, we were already having struggles because when you start zooming in into specific disciplines, you, you get a very rare sets of people, you know, very little data. So even trying to project what the, the demands for very esoteric disciplines will be a struggle. You can only give big pictures. This is the hard part, you know, when, when you have, regardless whether you're looking at, at the um, surveys of the PSA or um, the census, because you have a very small population already and trying to predict what you will really need for the future will be will not be purely based on the current sets of data, but I think you need a, a lot of discussions from industry because it's possible that you're not get, get, get seeing that picture directly from surveys because of the limitation. Okay, thank you very much for that. We have another question from Dr. Gerald uh, Benoga. Perhaps he can ask this uh, himself, uh, sir. If would you like to? Um... Yes, go ahead, Paul. Your other question. The same question. Same problem. That's the same question, Paul. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh huh. Sige po. Salamat. Okay. Um. If we. Okay. Um. We have a, a comment here from, uh, okay. Well, this is actually a, a, um, a question from one of our uh, discussants, uh, Dr. Metilio, sir. You have a question here regarding the set of methods. Would you like to ask this yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm just interested that uh, uh, on your methods uh, can actually produce uh, an information bulletin or forecast of SDI jobs regularly. Um, I, I think you, uh, the thing is, uh, the, there are current information available directly from the Department of Labor and Employment. I think they... Uh, they they regularly look at the the but this is more from the formal sector the the the, the hot jobs but it's not on SNT itself it's very general so uh, they they do give that kind of information on the current sets of in demand things uh, but this is more from uh, their 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 admin sources and uh, uh, perhaps uh, I think I think Anna might have mentioned this in in passing. 
uh, they have the jobs fit uh, report where they monitor um, occupations that are uh, in huge demand, but uh, for which the demand is not being met. Those are the cross cutting occupations, and they mention the the emerging occupations. But um, there's really not they don't substantiate with uh, numerical data the basis for identifying this uh, cross cutting and emerging occupations. They just give examples. Mm -hmm. um, can I add, if we are to yes, produce yes. a consensus-based forecast, that like what I did for the industry, we would need at least five years because we would need to wait for the census data. So the next census would be 2020. So it's 2010, 2015, 2021. And then we would need to wait for the input-output table na, na, uh, in the next available. So it's really data problems that's keeping us from, from doing this regularly and uh, na must responsive dun sa changes na nakikita natin ngayon. So, uh, we can do that kung mabilis din yung data natin, but unfortunately, hindi ganun. Okay. Thank you very much for those uh, important points, uh, Chris and me. Um, going back to our chat box, uh, I think we have already uh, responded to all the questions. I hope so. No, no, no hands raised. Anyway, well, uh, we just would like to remind everyone, and this is uh, requested by the DOSC, if everyone could um, stay um, at the end of the forum so we can have a photo, photo opportunity later. Okay. Meron tayong pahabol na question dito. Ruby Christo, Cristobal from Ruby Cristobal. Um, would you like to ask this yourself, Ruby? Hello? Okay, let me just read it. Um, would a future qualitative method on SUV human resource preference be useful? Any thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, certainly the, the, the hard part is this. You see, when we were doing all the quantitative analysis, uh, based on the available data, trying to you you can only you can get very fairly good but not that good pictures uh, of the big pictures because even when you say big pictures, you know as was mentioned by Anna, the labor force service five uh, suggests only you have five percent of S and T workers, so five percent of forty thousand houses being interviewed, you can just imagine that's just very little. Then when you start zooming to the specific occupations, then you have problems. No? So that's why you're not able to get a very consistent set of stories on, on the, the, the demand and supply, partly because of that kind of uh, data limitation. However, so to some extent, the qualitative information that, that might be available directly from the, from let's say the industry players, that's why it's, it's good that we have uh, the industry players uh, voicing out their opinions. Uh, Dan Lachica earlier said that, okay, we have 80% of our workers are, are, are women. That tells a story, but the only thing is it's specific to his industry. It may not represent the entire industry. So the hard part is trying to to also, now if you're DOST SEI and you're trying to su suggest what would be the specific uh, industry categories, uh, uh, the, the specific disciplines, we will need to have a, a bigger supplies on so so this is a it's a little bit of a, a, a struggle to to try to put uh, mixed methods uh to some extent that 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 should help but then at the same time you also need to recognize that by doing so uh using qualitative information they you'll also there's a possibility that you may not be representing the entire population as well no so it's a it's a big struggle so how do you how do you tell that story but uh, I, I think there is some room for it, but, but you also need to recognize limitations. Thank you very much, Toots. We have another question from um, NRCP President uh, Dr. Gregorio Del Pilar, sir. Would you like to ask this yourself, sir? Hello? Sige, Sige, po. Sige po, sir. Proceed uh, na po. Uh, yung tungkol dun sa maagang pag-alis ng mga math and stat uh, 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 graduates ano mula sa workforce uh, pwede kayang 
Kasi ang impression ko karamihan ng mga nandito sa fields na ito ay mga babae. Hindi ako nagkakamali. Mm-hmm. Hindi kaya may kinalaman doon. No? Yung, yung pangangailangan na pagsisibula ng pamilya, baka mas mabigat ang epekto sa kanila pero sa mga lalaki. Yes. Uh, maybe no maybe I'd, I'd like to throw the question directly to Charlie and to, to uh, Anna yeah. because the Charlie. school of statistics although Anna has okay. uh, retired but maybe the the you know talking with their with their students they they might be able to say a little bit more okay Dr Tabunda please if you could also um enable your your uh video so that we can see you well we really won't have uh data to back up uh any uh any uh we don't have any data to substantiate or not substantiate that uh it's a possibility for certain women but right now it's we're also getting more male uh students in the graduate program so there might be other reasons uh they might be shifting to uh other uh skills or occup or occupations they might be shifting to um let's say uh, the business administrative uh, portion or the management side that we run and we also have to take into account how many at the outset are they uh, really uh, as a percentage of the well as i said in in statistics we're seeing more male students lately especially in the graduate programs charlie you want to add Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, as uh, oh, some math, I, I, uh, yes, there are, 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 there's a large percentage that are women, pero uh, hindi hindi ganon ka ano eh, um, around siguro ba half. Uh, but we are not sure kasi kung saan sila pumunta. So uh, that, that's the that's the ano that's the uh, issue. And uh, that's why we cannot definitely say uh, yung reason kung bakit sila uh, umaalis ng mas maaga. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that I can say. Yeah, napaka-simple na bang i-test doon actually, eh, di ba, sa data? Um, can I share what I found using the census data naman from, for my part? Kasi I found out that based on 2015 census data, uh, the fields of life sciences, physical sciences, and math and statistics is really female dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you plot their survival, kasi at the beginning palang, yung talaga yung females mas konte na yung pumapasok sa labor force, but their supply will dwindle even more due to childbearing age. So, yung sinasabi ni sir, it's really a possibility na kaya sila umalis kasi papakasal sila. Plus, pa konte ng pa konte yun habang tumatanda yung females. That's what I found. Pero posible rin kasi like uh, as was mentioned by Anna, for instance, to be more specific at PIBS, we have a number of our fellows or PhD in economics, but they started off as BS in, in statistics. Uh, yo, so pwedeng nag, ganun na nangyayari that they, they get into other fields, economics related, but so they're no longer counted within within statistics anymore because they they shifted they get into management kasi nakikita ay kaila mas okay alam na namin yung data so maybe uh, i i can get into business i can get into other things so that's a, 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 one of the possibilities pero in fairness nga no as i was saying if you look at the entire labor market the entire uh, labor force participation rates mas mataas pa rin eh, across even for 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 science and math if you compare with the average across the entire society so to, pero yun lang uh, it's a little bit of still a puzzle baka posibleng part of it is they're shifting but part of it but the bigger storyline really is that uh women really uh, in the philippines they drop out uh, very fast uh, uh, in the labor market because of um especially home care you know uh, pag na buntis na tapos ang hirap bumalik na pag pag ano pa pag you know pag na, uh, umalis ka na sa sa trabaho it's even harder uh, for you to to go back uh, and this is not this is not true just in in the Philippines nung nanood ako ng again Korean novela it's the same story in Korea 
<laughs> so parang yun yung struggles about women uh, as against men. No? I mean well, men naman di, naman di man hindi man kami nanganganak no. Uh, so so yun yung uh, they, they have that the uh, burden uh, of home care uh, that sort of uh, makes it more difficult for them to re-enter. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and for our last question, may we hear from um, Executive Director of the NRCP, Dr. Marietta Sumagaysay. Ma'am, you have a question here on uh, uh, related to uh, data, lack of yes, thank you. data. Thank you. Yes, uh, I was just thinking the givens are we lack good quality data and there are time lags in between censuses. So how can this be addressed such that we get reliable projections and relevant timely uh, recommendations? Uh, pababayaan labag natin ganito lang and then we just uh, use whatever is available. Uh, my idea is, is there something we can do with the data? I mean, how it can become more sufficient, more regular, more frequent? And finally, congratulations for doing a uh, gender lens, having a gender lens in your analysis. Thank you. Suits so your mic, please uh, turn it on. Okay, um, let me take this on. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your for your point. Um, I I think uh, th this was already mentioned partly that there because you know we can't really pressure. I mean the Philippines and many countries they really only conduct censuses every ten years. Tayo nga meron pa tayong mid decade census. So kaya since the nineteen ninety five we've been having mid decade census. So, so to some extent. Uh, if we want to get really more information right now, there the PSA is con going is conducting the the census. This is September, uh, so the results of this will probably come. I don't know, <laughs> at least six months initially. The just the overall, but then the actual data need be another two years <laughs> to get the 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 information. So yes. it's 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 a it's it's a struggle. But the the heart the the point raised by Anna Tabunda earlier that uh, we need the bigger bigger sample sizes for labor the labor force survey. Pampalubag loob, I think the PSA did that already. No? So now their new master sample design uh, multiplies the uh, the 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 surveys by four four times. Dati mga forty thousand, ngayon one hundred sixty thousand ang sina survey nila every quarter. So that's why they're able to get fairly reliable estimates now. So the only thing is, kasi naging constraint ni ni, ni Anna when she was doing all the projections was nagkaroon ng break ng series. Kasi yung mga certain occupations like IT, minsan uh naging strict to ngayon na naging nagcha-change ng ano so ang hirap ngayon mag-project ng historical information pero kung magiging consistent yung time series ngayon uh can continue at least examining the labor force survey uh, the way that Anna did this uh once they they keep giving us information kaya ang struggle ng PSA laging uh, delayed even with with the micro data they will not make it available until at least i think 6 months later so for instance the 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 pandemic information on the first quarter and then the second quarter which they should be releasing this month we will only get that information at best yung april round by by uh kailan ngayon ngayon na pwede october siguro makukuha na natin but uh, the the july round we will get that. They will release it now. So it, and we'll wait another three months. So mga January, February pa natin makukuha if we're going to analyze. So it takes, a, it's a very big struggle to actually uh, examine all of this data kasi parang yun nga, it, it, yeah, there's a time lag, but we can't pressure them because hindi, talaga hindi si, kahit na hindi, kaibigan na nga namin, matagal na matagal talaga mag, magbigay ng data yung PSA. It took them a long time because they also generally release uh, very big aggregates Ang problema kasi doon sa big aggregates, yung tinatawag na uh, three or two digit classifications of the occupations and education codes. Kasi uh, yung tinatanong usually sa labor force survey, yung mga nasa bahay. No? Eh, most of the time, we assume that whoever is responding sa bahay, alam niya lahat ng information about all household members, which is not necessarily true. Posibleng yung nanay, eh, siya ang sumagot, pero hindi naman niya alam yung de details. So minsan, hindi sila ganong ka -com -com comfortable even about the so-called third and fourth digit classifications and, and na, na nag-iiba-iba pa across the years. So it's, it's a struggle. So unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. But what we can do is really 
encourage, not just even encourage, if we can force all higher educational institutions to give information on the sinabi to kanina ng, ng ating dean from MS, MSUIIT, if we can force HEIs to have tracer studies, no? Uh, so we can trace the, the, the current supply of, of students, where are they going, etc. So it, that might help to, to tell a little bit more of the story, but there are things that unfortunately we, we cannot, we really just have to wait until data is available. But we can supplement that with extra information from yun nga, the industry associations, uh, but to some extent, yun nga, the hard part is how can we tell the, the overall national story? Uh, so it's it's a bit of a struggle. Thank you very much, Toots. Well, uh, friends, uh, just to wrap up and close our open, open forum, there are um, obviously many takeaways that we can glean from today's discussion. And if I may just pick one, I think one of the most important is one of, of one of the most significant is, is the need for for uh, greater uh, government academic industry collaboration to beef up our human resource requirements in s &D. and And so we need more conversations like this where different sectors can sit together, can, can uh, scrutinize the evidence and identify the gaps and uh, formulate actionable recommendations. At this point, please join me in thanking our uh, speakers, uh, the uh, the team of uh, Dr. The team led by Dr. Albert and of course the study team members uh, consisting of Mr. Charlie Labina, Dr. C. P. David, Dr. Chris Francisco, Dr. Anna Tabunda, and of course, uh, Dr. Janet Cuenca and uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Jennifer Vasmanos. I hope I did not uh, miss any thoughts. Uh, let us give them a big virtual clap. Okay, and at this point, I'd like to call on uh, Dr. Chose. Uh, Josette Dio, the director of the OST Science Education Institute, to formally close this event. PIDS, thank you for conducting this study and for organizing this roundtable discussion in cooperation with the Science Education Institute. To our panel of reactors, thank you for your suggestions and comments. And for the OST officials, government officials, uh, the academe, our scientists, academicians, and all our stakeholders who are here today, we appreciate your presence. We consider you our partner as we strive to increase the number and improve the quality of SNT human resources that the country needs for in support of its national development programs. Five years ago, when I joined SEI, we had a roundtable discussion, which was well also attended by st stakeholders. The output of which was that we were able to update the list of our SNT priority courses for the undergraduate scholarship programs. But time is uh, really very fast, and we experienced a lot of changes. And two years ago, we had a series of meetings with our DOST councils. Again, the output of which was that we were able to update the list of our MS and PhD scholarship programs, both at the local and the uh, international levels. And um, as presented in this research, there are really a lot of challenges na kailangan natin harapin to improve our SNT workforce in the country so that we can have inclusive um, national development. But uh, at this point in time, let me just present to you some silver linings na mga, mga magaganda namang nangyayari. No? Number one is in terms of government support, our budget. Five years ago, the budget natin for scholarships for undergraduate levels can only accommodate 3,000 incoming freshmen. For MS, 700 slots, and we still divide that into three programs. One for MS and PhD for engineers, another is for teachers, and another is for all areas of sciences and mathematics. For PhDs naman, 250 slots lang. So a year after that, uh, we lobbied at the DBM, Congress, and even Senate, at pinakita sa kanila yung scenario. Wala mangyayari sa Pilipinas kung ganyan lang ang budget na ibibigay nyo for scholarships. So, we are very happy because two years later, sobra pa sa double ang budget na binigay sa atin. No? So, three years ago, from 3,000 undergraduate slots, we were able to accommodate 9,000 incoming freshmen from 700 
1,400 MS, and from 250, we were given a slot for 700 PhDs, as well as number of slots for foreign graduate scholarships. So, masaya tayo sa support na binibigay ng national government and uh, nakikita nila yung importance ng ating program. Second is in terms of awareness. So, when I entered SEI, we only have about 40,000 scholarship applicants in the various areas of STEM. The following year, it was 80,000. Last year, we have 110 applicants for this year's scholarship. And for next year's scholarship, September 30th ang deadline natin. But we are already receiving 200,000 applicants even with this pandemic. And I do believe that this is the result of our aggressive promotion programs. We have STEM promotion programs all over the country. And I'm also very happy to inform you that out of the 1,560 municipalities and congressional districts without municipalities, ang na-reach na natin is 98%. In other words, 36 municipalities na lang ang wala tayong scholars, and these are in very remote areas. But we are trying to do some interventions para maging mademocratize at maging inclusive din yung ating program. And also, we incentivize our MS and PhD graduates. It's a reality that sometimes, kahit natapos na nila yung degrees nila, even abroad, pagbalik nila sa Pilipinas, walang hiring. So we implemented this career incentive program or graduate Fellowship program. We hire our MS and PhD graduates with substantial salaries. Uh, SEI pays for their salaries and we deploy them to research institutions para magamit nila yung kanilang mga expertise or they can still be further mentored by other scientists. And in terms of faculty development, we provide scholarships for universities. Meron tayong tinatawag na strand program, SNT Alliance of Regional uh, Universities for Inclusive Development. No? Inaitagalap natin yung mga universities na maganda ang program, pinapaaral natin yung kanilang mga faculty members, and eventually, naging delivering institution sila ng ating mga scholarship programs. In terms naman of improving the quality of education, especially at the secondary level, Meron din naman tayong tinatawag na Project STAR, SNT um, training for teachers, and we work closely with the Department of Education. And we even uh, have other intervention programs kasi naniniwala tayo na hindi lang hard skills or SNT skills. We should develop holistic scholars. No, we have intervention programs. Pinasuka na namin yung mga formation programs, community engagement programs to make our scholars more relevant in the country and a lot more. So, uh, maganda itong ginawa nating research and um, a roundtable discussion kasi ang good news is that based on the net expenditure program na sana ma-approve na ng Congress at ng Senate is that for 2021, dinoble pa ang budget ng Science Education Institute for scholarships. Now, this year, we announced, we announced 9,000 undergraduate scholars but per our NEP, maka-announce kami ng 16,000 incoming freshman scholars in 2021 and also for MS and PhDs. Kaya kailangan namin itong mga inputs nyo para mag relevant talaga at ma-address ang needs natin in terms of um, quality, SMT, human resources na talagang makasagot no, sa pangangailangan ng ating panahon. So to all of you who are here today, uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rod. It was uh, EOST uh, SEI Executive Director, Dr. Joseph Dio. Um, please don't go yet, okay? Because we still have a photo opportunity. Um, okay, so how do we do this? May I request everyone to please turn on your uh, videos so that you'll be in the, in the photo. Okay. Someone from uh, DOST is capturing the, this, right? And also someone from BIDS. Yeah? I hope we we'll capture po from BIDS. Okay. Sige, yeah. Just let us know pag tapos na. Okay. Po. Bali, tatlong shot po. Kasi tatlong... Okay. Tatlong shot daw. Okay. Wow. 
Si Dr. Siti dati naka-off yung ano niya, yung video niya, sir. Low bandwidth po si sir. A low bandwidth si sir. Ay, okay na. Ay, hindi pa pala. Okay. First, first page po. Okay. Smile. Is it done? The second page. Okay, second page. Third page. Third na? Papa. Okay. Okay, na po. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for joining our uh, virtual roundtable discussion this morning. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end. Maraming salamat po. And uh, see you in our future events. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you to our uh, OSC. Thank you. Thank you.